Hi all, Mark here with the Exiles, and in this video I'd like to explain what's meant by the terms stabile, instabile and pulsativa uh, in reference to the posta of Fury's system, and importantly why these terms are so important, so incredibly important to the Fury practitioner. Now I've made some notes because I can literally talk about this all day and I'm sure you don't want another 30 minutes of conversation um, in a vlog. But um, if there's a few things first, okay? So here we're talking about specifically uh, the Spada Aduimani posta or the two-handed sword posta um, specifically, okay? We're not talking about the guards that are shown in Fury's manuscripts. Um, these are quite different um, and a lot more about methodology. Uh, so definitely for, for another video. Also, we're taking our best view on the meaning of these words. Words, um, as they are in name, okay? Name translation and practice. We're not translating these words into current day terms um, because I feel that when we do this, something is lost. And there's a really good example of this when we actually get onto the, the three terms. Now, it's easy to mix and match historical and modern terminology, but sometimes, particularly with these examples, uh, it can lead to all sorts of issues, not least because the historical words can sometimes have quite literal meanings that don't translate very well into, into modern, uh, modern terminology. So, posta. Okay, now they're commonly called guards, although, as, we've ju as I've just mentioned, uh, guards have their own distinction within the system. So, don't fall into that trap, okay? Posta are specific, um, and it's worth just keeping the name posta. Uh, because they're not they can't be thought of as guards um, in, in the same way as the guards within the system. Now, I won't go into great detail um, with the actual use of posters specifically, although a couple of weeks back there was a video of a workshop that I did where we used some examples of poster um, and, and how they use strategically um, as part of the overall fight. But poster, loosely defined, um, are positions to attack and defend from, okay? But they're more than just places to wait, okay? They are reactive uh, and I'm very big on posta being the um, the last chance to be to be truly strategic as part of the overall sequence of of Fury's fight. So what does this mean? Well, posta is still part of master battle, okay? And in very simple terms, master battle is everything that basically happens before you come into distance and begin the remedy portion of the fight as Fury sees it. Um, master battle holds all the basics, so cuts, thrusts, distance, management, movement, um, very basic attacks and defences, so in our case beats, breaks and covers, or how we define them. Basically anything that happens before you come into remedy, okay, and remedy is where your plays start, where you come into distance, you're both able to hit each other, and your plays start. Um, but importantly, your plays start because you're facing someone that you can't take out with just basics, okay? If I can just cut at someone and maim them, I've won, okay? I don't need a technique, I don't need to go into the remedy portion of my fight. However, if I'm up against someone that has a half a clue and I cut at them and they defend, then suddenly we're both in distance, potentially both able to hit each other, and therefore that's when the remedy portion of my fight starts. So everything before remedy is master battle, okay? All the basics. The reason why your posta are so important and the last chance to be truly strategic is because the distance gives you time to think strategically about the fight that you want to unfold. Because once you both come into distance, really, in reality, your brain isn't quick enough to keep making thought out strategic decisions, okay? After that point, it's all reactive based on familiar positions and familiar trained responses. That's real fighting with adrenaline and fear of uh, consequence and, and all the rest of it. So your posture are used strategically, okay, to try and position yourself and your weapon in such a way where you're trying to gain the upper hand to either reduce decision-making processes um, or force a desired outcome. And it's super important to bear that in mind, okay? So posture aren't just positions to, to wait in um, for appearances sake. So here's a couple of examples to give this a bit of meat on the bone, okay? So if I have an opponent who's up, up in a high line, say on their right shoulder with their point offline, then I may want to take up a position, or posture in my case, uh, where I'm low with the point online, okay? The idea being to try and force them to either come out of position or to attack me in a certain way. Or I want to present my own posture and my own threat to take advantage of their high position with my own attack, where that attack will either land first, say for example if I thrust, or take them out of position with their own defence. Thus I've either hit them or I've forced a predictable outcome. And this is the point of 
posture and why we use them and why they're so important. Because I'm trying to gain the upper hand before I come to the remedy phase of my fight. And remember, when I get to my remedy phase, the risk increases because we're at a distance now where we can both, um, both hit each other. Now, of course, I'm oversimplifying a bit here, but for me, um, there's just not enough importance placed on Posta in the wider Fury community. Um, people rush to play and they rush to remedy because that's the you know the bulk of the manuscript deals with that. Um, that's where all the cool stuff happens in, in most people's eyes. Um, lastly, you can transition between Posta to gain that strategic upper hand once, twice, five times, ten times. Remember... Real combat with two versed practitioners is a matter of milliseconds and millimetres at a high level. So the idea of posture is you're trying to gain every last ounce of uh, the upper hand that you possibly can before that that fight comes to the remedy stage okay you want to make the most of any advantage you can gain with your positioning while you're safe in distance or relatively safe in distance um, before that fight starts to become reactive now stabile instabile and pulsativa okay so these are descriptive terms bolted to the names of the poster themselves why do they matter well we are trying to piece together a very large and very complex martial system laid down in 600 year old notes. Now in another video we'll probably give our thoughts, no we will give our thoughts rather, on how we feel Fiori taught his material, but it certainly would not have been a lifelong pursuit for his students. Fiori's written works serve as a reminder to those whom he taught, okay? So we come along 600 years later, we pick up the notes written for someone who received direct tutelage, um, and of course, for them, the written word stabile was a reminder, but for us, um, it's an insight into trying to decipher how this system was used. So it's hugely important, given everything I've said just now, um, for us to understand the descriptive terms of the poster and what those descriptive terms actually mean um, as people now are trying to recreate the system without the benefit of direct instruction from the creator of it. So here are our descriptions and our long-term definition of these three terms. So firstly, we'll start with stabile. Okay, now effectively, this means stable. Uh, they are positions close to the core of the body. Uh, they are posture that can be held against thrusts and cuts and sometimes both. You can attack from these positions as, um, as you can with all posture, but in practice they are better for attack than, than defence. Okay? They are positions to transition quickly into, uh, but not actively. That is to say that transitioning into them, into a, a, a stable posture, um, rarely creates a new defensive or aggressive action. Um, they are not for collapsing, folding or rotating. They are positions to be held. Uh, good examples of this are Dente de Cingali um, Stabile, which is a posture which is close to the core and stable in use uh, with a thrust or with a beating action, exactly as the description of the posture um, uh, states. Um, another good example is Posta Breve Stabile, um, which is also to the core. It's stable, it's solid, it's good for exchange of thrusts. Um, we have to be really careful, however, because sometimes there's a few grey areas. So, for example, posta stabile, um, pardon me, posta breve stabile, um, as soon as that posta comes away from the body, it becomes instabile. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, because all of those central posta are kind of linked. So posta breve is, is stable, it's close to the body, it's good for exchange, as I've said, um, it's a position to hold, but the minute you move, you can't really see, can you? But the minute you move your arms forward away from your core, that posta then becomes instabile. And that's really important to mention as one example of a, of a gray area with, with sometimes how we look at posta. So the next term is instabile, okay? Now, this is where we have to be careful because instabile, to say instabile means unstable is wrong in literal terms. So remember earlier I said about the risk of trying to use modern terminology um, when looking at these terms. So an instabile posta do move a lot and they are unstable in this in this context um, intentionally or otherwise but they're not in state in unstable in terms of um, how you hold them and how you form them okay they are not positions to be held so I guess you could say they're unstable because of that but they're positions to intentionally keep moving with um, they 
are for rotating the weapon, so collapsing the weapon. Um, I'll give a couple of examples in a second. And they are for transitioning to and from um, into new defensive or aggressive actions. So they are posture with kind of easy attacking options, but options which in the first instance will likely fail against a well-versed opponent. Thus, they are often folded or collapse into a new ac action, as I've said. So a good example of an instabile posture is um, posture di finestra instabile, uh, commonly called window or the window guard, although we've already said about the risk of calling something a guard. So the point is high um, and the point is online. Okay, It's held up by the head. Obviously, look at the manuscript for the actual image of the action itself. And the position is ready for a big thrust. I'm forming this on the left side of my body because the camera's, but it, you can form it on the right. Um, but it's positioned for a big thrust. Okay? Okay. Now, from that position, as you gain a little bit of distance, you can quite happily just thrust at your opponent and hopefully hit them. If they're not a versed practitioner, then you're going to hit them. Hey, you've won. Game over. If they are a versed practitioner, which is likely going to be the case, then you know that that thrust will probably fail. Now, if they're in a high guard... Um, say on their right shoulder and you're in Fenestra threatening with the point and thrust, then probably what's going to happen is they're going to come in and defend against your thrust. This is now forcing a predictable outcome um, and it's instabile because you're then probably going to let that thrust collapse and turn it into a cut, which is exactly like the first play of, of uh, Jocko Largo. So with Fenestra, instabile you're closing off a line of attack as well so if your opponent is thinking about cutting down that same side that you formed that posture on really it's not an open option to them uh, because you're closing off a line of attack and if they do attack you down that line then you slip out into a cover and you collapse that weapon and turn it into a cut so that's why it's an example of an instabile posture it's instabile because of how you use it, not by definition. In terms of just because someone hits it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an unstable, it's a weak posture. It's, it, you're, it's instability because you want to fold and twist into a new defensive or aggressive action. And this is why, again, it's, it's really key to sometimes stick with the terminology as intended rather than trying to turn it into a modern day term like unstable um, because they're not necessarily unstable. Um, unstable would suggest that if you hit um, the weapon once it's in that posture it's going to fold and that's not quite true. You want it to fold but it doesn't have you don't have to fold with it. You can force a line um, and hold the posture by coming offline but then that's another action so the posture itself is instabile. If this all sounds a bit confusing, it's because it is. And it's quite hard to sometimes show this without actually having a weapon in my hand and trying to explain it. Uh, but hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It'll probably make a bit more sense if you look at the images in the manuscript and imagine how they, uh, how those posters would be used or look at the descriptive terms as to how they actually are used. And hopefully that will add a bit more context to what we mean or what I mean. So the next one is pulsativa. Now, there are a few translations of this word, but I think it's commonly agreed that um, pulsating and power or with power is generally the agreed on functional description in terms of how these posture are actually used. The literal translation of the word is kind of still up for some debate. Um, so three of the 12 posture are pulsativa. And when Fio is describing those posture, um, he's using terms like great and strength. Um, for example, he says stands with great strength, uh, stands with strength or is good for great blows. So pulsativa are, are posture that have lots of power. OK, they are predominantly for attacking with speed and strength or for solid covers with power. It's hard to change direction with these posters uh, or the actions from them. And by default, because of where they're formed, it's really hard to transition into other posture as well. So from pulsativa poster, it's generally about large scale dominating actions, either in attack or reactive defense. And you're using the actions from these poster to take lines and dominate them aggressively with beats, breaks and covers. Um, this is why they're quite wide spaced actions. For example, Posta de Donna um, is because you want to generate a lot of power and you want to dominate a line when you take it. So I can dominate a line either with an action of my own, cutting out, dominating a line. If I don't hit them, I'll hopefully gain centre line. Or if I'm taking a cut from my opponent, I can dominate a line with my defence, either meeting in crusada or breaking a thrust or whatever. 
whatever. So this is why they're wide spaced uh, actions with the weapon um, and they are also leaving lines open to invite an attack um, which can then be closed with your own defence. So that's our kind of loose definition of pulsativa. Um, and in simple terms, that's it, okay? Obviously putting these definitions into kind of workable, practicable intent uh, requires a bit more sort of functional focus. Um, but why this subject and why, why now? So recently we've been engaged in conversations with other well-respected Fury practitioners and, and good friends of our group, uh, both publicly and more so privately. And there are some really key differences in our interpretations with these terms, actually translations of the words themselves and indeed the interpretations in terms of how they use and how they manifest themselves in the art, uh, which is great, okay? Differences between long-standing groups that have the benefit of experience and tenure in this subject um, and years worth of public scrutiny of their interpretations means that for sure we are all carefully considering each other's views in a respectful and professional way, which is really rare for public discourse, public HEMA discourse these days. Um, these conversations I guess are as close as you can get to expert views in this subject area with practical academic and time-tested evidence. So it's been great and it's exactly why personally I still do enjoy uh, public discussion after all these years despite all the armchair experts which I won't go into now. In fact I'll leave that for um, the grumpy old exile and his new YouTube channel. I suggest you give it a look. But that's it. That's our line in the sand. That's our definitions of those three terms. Um, I suggest you just go back and look at the vlog we loaded a couple of weeks ago of the workshop that I did with some workable practic uh, practical examples of using the poster in there, um, but really super key. Anybody that doesn't at least form poster and fight and conduct themselves from and into poster as part of their, their fury conduct um, is really missing a, a, a massive, massive part of master battle. And master battle is easily 90% of your overall fight. Um, fact. So thanks for your time um, and we'll hopefully speak again.